So I'm calling this my beach inverted V. I'm using a uh, a 13 foot telescopic fishing pole, which I got for fifteen dollars at Bass Pro Shops. And the feed line and the antenna is uh, just this. It's some uh, 28 gauge speaker wire. I just split it. As you can see there. So it's, uh, it, it's an all-in-one antenna. It's the antenna and the feed line all combined. These things are great. This is like a ham shack in a, in a palm of your hand here. It goes into this uh, QRP antenna tuner. Now, why would I do this instead of making a vertical antenna? Well, a vertical requires radials, and but here on the beach, you got people and they're going to be walking across the radio so i prefer this uh, a lot of your portable verticals are uh, coil loaded to make them shorter so that makes them less efficient and this is a full-sized antenna for uh for 20 meters now of course it's it's not nearly high enough i mean 13 feet for for 20 meters isn't much but when you have this as your ground plane, it kind of covers a multitude of sins. So that's my beach inverted V, just an inexpensive telescopic fishing pole held up by those things that beach fishermen stick their fishing poles in. Now that total investment was less than $30 compared to hundreds of dollars for some of these commercially made portable antennas, many of which use inefficient power-wasting loading coils. One popular commercially made portable dipole antenna, which elevates the antenna only about as high as mine, but uses loading coils in each leg of the antenna costs nearly $500. Now give me one reason that antenna would work better than mine. Well, how did my beach inverted V work? Well, receive signals were blasting in. F8 DGY in France was 599 plus. Now, as for me, I wasn't exactly bending anyone's S meter, but I'll share with you a screenshot from the reverse beacon network. So my farthest uh, contact, S54L in Slovenia, Signal to noise, signal to noise ratio, 12 dB, not not too bad. Uh, the best signal here, 15 dB, uh, W1NT. Then we've got 10 dB up in Canada, VE3EID, and then way up in Canada, up here in the Great White North, uh, VE6JY. Well, your signal would have been better with a commercially made antenna because you can adjust the coils for an SWR of one. SWRDS, SWR derangement syndrome is alive and well in this hobby. You know, that, that, uh, that transmission line may have been 20 feet. Had it been high loss RG174 coax with an SWR of 10 to one, I'd be putting out 3 watts instead of 5. That's a loss of 2 dB, one-third of an S unit. And how much power is lost in those loading coils of other antennas? Well, what about loss in that antenna tuner? Another myth. Antenna engineer Tom Rausch, W8JI, has found antenna tuners to be at least 90% efficient. That little true USDX transceiver is great for the beach because it only costs around $100 and it works all modes 
read your SWR, and can even be used for digital. I don't advise bringing expensive gear onto the beach because sand gets into everything. So, think about uh, getting a little QRP rig and getting outside. Try different antennas. Make them. Be a real ham. It's not hard and it's inexpensive. And learn CW. Well, consider subscribing to this channel. Ring the bell for updates in 73.